What's going on guys? Today we're covering afro hair. We are going to be doing an afro hair tutorial. We are going through some afro hair videos and you're going to see my reaction. Let's go. Okay, he's clipping his clippers. Ah, quick sip of coffee. Don't be taking too much of a break, bro. No. So you see he's got the waves going on as well. They're looking nice. Sharp, very clean. See how he went back on the shape up as well, that's something I like to do. Very, very clean, very clean fade, low fade. Kept the waves, smashed it, perfect. So I would rate that haircut nine out of 10. Pretty sharp. Really the guy just shouldn't have been pissing about as much during the haircut, but apart from that it was class. Ah, oh, self trim. Okay, so this guy's got the three way mirror. It's something that I've been wanting to get at home. It saved me a lot of time. Not bad at all, not bad, not bad, very clean. I'd probably rate that trim a number nine out of 10, to be fair. What do you think about people who get their own hair cut and they do it themselves? If you're a barber, I rate it. If you're not, go to a barber's. Simple as. Yes, I do my own. But, steeded my hair this week, just because I was rushing around, just to conserve energy, really. I just fancied sitting down and actually enjoying the process of getting a haircut. But in general, I like to cut my own hair weekly. Just because I don't really like bothering the staff too much when they're having their break. I like them to actually have their break and not pressure them to get a haircut. So that's normally why I tend to cut my own hair. So now that I've come down with my one and a half open, Paul's really ain't gonna do that much to be fair. So I'm just gonna go into it with a two back up. So you go down with a shorter guard, up with a longer guard, and I create no lines, okay? So two on, closed. And this is the shape that I want to be following. So I'm going to take his head shape into account. I'll be going from the recession point and then dropping it around this occipital bone here. You don't really want to be going sky high with that fade at the back. Do you know what I mean? So I'm going to there, so there. So now I'm looking for any darker areas. I'm trying to make all of this here, but the same color as that all the way around. So you're looking for coloration. This has got to be like your wedding cut now, bro, and it's on camera, Jesus Christ. Yeah. No messing about. Now we'll go back to my one and a half. Open. Obviously as well, I know it sounds really stupid, but you've got to make sure that your client is in the, like, the optimal height for your posture. Do you know what I mean? So like if he was too low and I was fading him down here, I wouldn't be able to see properly. Do you know what I mean? If it's too high, then my shoulder will be up like that. And it's straight me, do you know what I mean? So it's really, really important that you just take that extra second at the start of the haircut to figure out where you want to be doing your drawing and your painting, do you know what I mean? So I tend to do half a head, spin it around in the mirror, and then I'll copy it on the other side. Because I've done Toby's hair that much nowadays, I know that I'm not gonna do it wonky, do you know what I mean? It's gonna be the same height both sides. And for the time being, it's not like, it's, I'm not really doing anything different to what other people will be doing in barber shops. It's pretty much straight up and down with the clippers at the minute. The refinement and the skill comes in towards the end. Uh, it's starting to lighten up in it bit by bit. That's the thing with Afro hair. It can look like a mess for quite a while, then all of a sudden it starts looking or resembling a, a decent haircut. Okay, so this guy has got a crazy, crazy sharp lineup with the mini clippers. I think he's using Babylus FX there. Wow, what a finish. Crazy. Do you know how hard it is to get an Afro <laughs> trim that smooth. It looks like he's combed it out, skimmed over the top, thrown the fade in, line, shape up, and then skimmed over the top again afterwards. Because the problem is with this type of haircut, when you're doing the shape up and you're boxing it off, when you're putting your fingers to pull the skin, you end up putting it into the afro and, in, and making those indents. So this guy clearly knows what he's doing. No, that's a straight 10, 10 trim, that. that's nuts. Yeah, that's probably one of the best afro haircuts I've seen in a while, to be fair, it was really, really nice. Yeah, that was a 10, 10 trim. Hands down. So I'm gonna go here, temple, and try and get that line as neat as you can. So it's just really, really small movements. Sideways, okay. You always get as well behind the ear, it's just dropped too much, so you just gotta take it a little bit higher behind the ear. When shaping an afro, I like to start in the middle, use that as my guide. I'm pretty much connected to the sides. So it's just something that I really like doing with afro hair, is the fact that you can sculpt it. It's very much just artwork at the end of the day, isn't it? And you need a very steady hand for it as well. As you can see, the hair is coming off like butter. You want to do this with a very sharp clipper. So he mentions clipper there, he's using magics. I tend to find that magics tend to overheat when I'm skimming over the top of afro hair. 
If you are going to be using magic clips for afro hair and you've been using them for a while, I would recommend getting ceramic blades for them. Or just get yourself a pair of gammas <laughs> because they just never overheat. Comes very sharp. After this, we're just going to curl sponge the top. This is how my client came in. This is how he's leaving. Click the link on my bio to book. Wow, that's sharp. But it looks like he's used enhancements there. See, all these gyms are looking really, really nice, but they've used enhancements for for quite a lot of them and i think a lot of american barbers do that not really dissing it it's just different interpretation of their artwork i respect it you know if the clients like it cool get it done i like to try and get this similar shape of what you've just seen there but without the enhancements that trim i would rate that was like a eight nine out of ten so i put my half line in and put my half on set it to a not two five i'm gonna tap into this line now so it's actually making the exact same line, just a little bit higher up, just a fraction. So you've still got to put some thought into it. You can't just start flicking through this without thinking. Go to a one open, but I'm going to use my ergos because they're more forgiving and go higher. So I'm going to sit straight to my one open, straight to the top, underneath where my two was. And what you'll see here now is this is where the skill comes in, where I'm starting to use the corner of the clipper. I'm not using all of it like square one like that, because I will just drag all this higher and ruin all the work that I've just done. I'm going to pick with the corners. Okay, so you can see his hair grows in this direction. It's quite hard to see. I'm going to start using the corners in that direction. There, like that. Use the other corner on the back. Then we're going to go one on, set to not two five. I'm going to do the exact same thing, just a bit lower down. I'm pulling his ear out of the way as well, so I'm not constantly bouncing on top of his ear and making that red raw. Close it to a one. Same thing, corner, corner, corner. It's all corner work now. Open it back up, just go a bit higher. Nice. Close it again to a one. What I'm looking for here is any dark streaks of hair that I need to pick out. I'm not going to get it going into it like that. I have to tilt the clipper on its side. Set to a 0.25. Want to work higher, open it up. Want to get this bit here. See, that's dark. That to me is like a line. So now we're going to tilt it, pick that hair out without affecting the rest of the trim. It's just lined up a bit. All right, now we're going to throw our zero in at the bottom. Use my boosted. Throw my zero line in. Just don't go as high as where I took my half. Same shape that you put the lines in earlier. Drop it below the occipital bone at the back. And don't worry about any of that underneath. We're going to take all that off of the mini clippers afterwards anyway. Just get that line in, fade that line out. That should be your priority. Now we're going to do that with a bit of trigger play. So we're going to go 0 two five, half and zero to fade that line out. So I'll do a 0 two five first. Seems like it's doing summer. And what it does is it pushes a little bit of that weight higher. So then what I do is I'll open up to a half and I'll go higher on my half to flick out that weight. Now I'm using corners. And then I'll tap back into that line with a zero at the bottom and 0 two five. And now you can see a nice even blend from the zero up to the four with the grain. This is how my client felt about his trim when I left the room. <laughs> He's cast. He's cast. So here's the thing though, I don't know. The shape up looks really, really nice bordering on going too far back. I'm not really liking that tape, if I'm honest. I feel like it's too high. It just goes too high up into the haircut. And the problem is if you do a taper that's too high into the haircut, it looks like a really badly done fade. I rate the shape up, shape up's up there, but I'd have to give that trim like a six. It's nice when you get the excitement from your clients like this though, it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, so the curling sponge as well. See, I was a fan of the curling sponge before, but now I prefer the curling comb because you can rinse it underneath the tap. Now let's push that weight up higher. Open it up, half. Lightly flip through that. Problem solved, mate. Honestly, the reason why I love cutting off her hair so much is because it's literally like shading. It really, really is. Now we're just going to clear that hair off at the bottom with the mini clippers. So we've got the hitters, zero gapped. Sometimes I'll turn them upside down just to get them to hit a little bit more. Just makes it a little bit sharper when you turn your clippers upside down. So if I say you guys at home had a zero line there and your big clippers were struggling to get them out, with the zero, what you do is flip it upside down and fade upside down, up like that, and it gives you like an extra half a mil. So if you guys are struggling to like fade out your foil lines and stuff, you can only see that it's making it sharper. You do that as well, just play with your levers as you're going. Maximize the use of your tools, different ways you can use them. 
And obviously all the hair at the back grows upwards anyway, so you're just going to come down against it. Something I would never ever recommend as well is using foils on Afro hair, especially at the back, because you're just going to create bumps. And those bumps can just become bigger and bigger and bigger as the years go by, so just clear all this hair off to Hobbs. Now I'm just going to tape his hairline down a little bit, so it's not so fluffy, so I want to shape it up, it sits a bit tighter. Start in the middle, work your way out. You just want to be really, really sparing with the hairline. Any hairline, to be honest with you. Because if you take it too far back, you ain't seeing him again, especially with an Afro trim. Any of these loose hairs coming forward, make sure you're getting them all. So it's the most nerve-wracking moment of the trip? Definitely, yeah, but it's, I enjoy this bit the most. I love art and I love drawing and I love pressure, so it ain't no problem. So we're just aiming to get that as neat a 90 degree angle as you can really, even if there's some loose hairs go up. The rule is if you see it, don't ignore it. Nice little C shape. There you go, nice natural shape now. Okay, so now what I'm doing now is I'm looking in the mirror and it's sort of imperfections. Because when I look at this in a naked eye, it's like your eyes. If, you, if you've been staring at a haircut too much, it'll start lying to you, but the mirror will never lie to you. So for me, I just needed a bit of clipper over comb there towards the back and that'll neaten that all really nice. So it's there, I could see in the mirror. So what I'll do as well is if I see it in the mirror, I'll point to it, then I'll go to it. Because if you look in the mirror and then you look down, <laughs> you've lost it completely. It's like half a mil, but it's doing my head in. Not even that, where is it? You're there. No, still there. Finally. So now I've got this side to do now. Okay, so we're going to clear them off with a hairdryer. Make sure it's all clinical, like surgery. He's in the clinic right now. So I'll switch up combs as well, see if I get on with this comb a little bit better with this side. Barber friend Henry, killing the game. Yeah, previous student, Zia, uh, previous student as well, killing the game. And then we've got Steve, my right hand man. Literally on my right hand side as well. We've got the girls braiding downstairs. For me, like, it's roots. I started off with roots, afro hair. Now we've got a braider in the basement. I'm buzzing, do you know what I mean? And I'm pretty sure I'm related to all them as well somehow, because they're all kits as well, so. <laughs> we got family upstairs, family downstairs, it's nice. I can't go home and sleep at night if I know I'm not giving 100%. I know if I didn't give 100% now to Toby's haircut and it was playing on my mind, I would message Toby and be like, bro, come see me next week, I want to go over your haircut. And I've done that for quite a few people. I had a guy who came to me for the first time, I wasn't really that happy with his haircut. I said, bro, come back next week, I'm going to give you a free trim, just so I can understand your haircut. And he was like, well, was there anything wrong with it? I was like, no, no, not at all, but I want to learn how to be able to give you a 10-10 trim. Anyway, he did that. I spent that extra time and attention on the haircut, didn't charge him, and then now I can just do his hair like that. We're about quality here, do you know what I mean? We're not about like smashing out loads of haircuts all day. Like, obviously, we want to be quite efficient and get the amount of haircuts in that we'd like to get in. But if we've got to sacrifice one or two to make sure that our haircuts are absolutely spot on and that we can sleep at night, then we'll do that. So now I'm going into that half line that I just did with the clippers, with my half guard on set to a 0.25. The thing is with Afro hair, because the hair sits so flat to his head, it's quite hard to get all of the hair. So you've got to be quite efficient and press firm enough, but then flick out. This fade method I share with every single student and we've got a client in for the first time, this will never fail. We give the artists like their own interpretation of it, like Z's only just finished the course recently. He's now kind of like adapted it to his own way. Now we're going to match up the shape up to the other side. Most important part of the haircut, this. So what I'm doing here now as well, guys, I'm, I'm looking for symmetry. I'm making sure that that side lines up right with that side. Whereas if I shape that low there and that high there, he's going to see that. So you're going to line it up. Nice and symmetrical. Just make sure the refinement you did on one side, you do on the other side as well. I've known of some barbers just to refine one side because that's the side that they're taking a picture from or a video from. It's a bit scandalous, man. You've got to do it, make sure it's equal. You know what you need to be to be a good barber? You need to be a fair person. You know that you're not trying to rip your client off and you're going to give them everything that you can. Some people, if you're not that fair a person and they know that they can get out of just doing that little bit extra for you, they will. I think it's quite hard to find a decent person who's quite fair. So shape up time now. So at the front, I've lined it up quite sharp with the clippers, the mini clippers anyway. So I don't really feel the need to potentially cut him or go into any of that because it's the shape's already there. So I'm just going to go from here, round the temple and through to the beard. Gently does it really now with the razor because you're going to do all that hard work and then cut him. So picking me, I feel like there's just always a little bit more, do you know what I mean? 
I'll end up with nowhere after this. Anyone out there that's experienced me following you down the street, <laughs> I apologise. It's just for it's just the love. Done. Fifteen, no, pleasure. Much love. Bye, Das. <laughs> just the fact that she went too close to me. <laughs> She's upset with you. Right, so office. This needs a tidy. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about the schools a little bit more, really, because I feel like it's uh, the projects that we've spoken about probably the least. We're now providing barbering education to schools. When I was in school, I really needed vocational kind of subjects where it was very hands-on. And I feel like a lot of kids are needing that now as well. It took about, I think it was almost two years of meetings just to make that happen. If either one of those parties wasn't patient with the back and forth, then it, it just wouldn't have happened. And then we've since then had an interest from another school, so potentially school number two. Yeah, I just feel like the whole school's really falling in love with it now. So we use the teachers as models because we tried the whole students thing. They just prat about, expect too much, turn their heads in the mirror. And one of the teachers came up to me about after like five or six weeks and just said that the students' mental health had just taken a complete U-turn in school since we started teaching them. And you know, the art of barbering, the art of communication, how to speak to people, how to listen to people. Yeah, watch your space, big things to come. So today you got to really see my passion for Afro hair. The detail that I go into, the refinement that's necessary. It's the attention to detail, really. Tony Leo, you guys know him. I trained him when he was like uh, 16 years old. He's getting better day by day. Fade, beard, happy with his job, honestly. But keep pushing him to do better and better. The sad things I'm taking his clients honestly. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, bro. That's true. I swear to God. <laughs>